Here's a Bell & Hal cassette recorder, model 294MC, from the early 70s, I would guess. The interesting thing about this is that it's in an executive desk tray. And it uh, comes in a box like that. And we have uh, instructions. These are pretty much the same instructions for all the Bell & Howe units. Although this one is interesting because it does have a pitch control. And I reviewed the 294M about two years ago maybe that had the pitch control over here. Now I'm not going to take this recorder out of this little slat here. It's kind of cumbersome because you have to run your earphone in here and your power cord and once I got it in I decided to just leave it like that. Um, and the only thing in there is a piece of funky old dirty black felt that it's sitting on. But why don't we take a minute to review the 294M which is pretty much identical. In 2013 I made a video about the Bell & Howe 294M a similar machine except its pitch control was kind of a kludgy attachment you had to use. I pointed out that the 294MC when it came out replaced the level meter with the pitch control which was a more elegant solution. And I looked inside and saw several Sanyo identifiers like the speaker 0.3 watts, uh, a race head, and the typical Sanyo board layout with a AC bias and a bias adjust port. All right, the uh, executive desk tray here is inside, of course, and has a spot for the microphone, which we're going to use. So we'll just uh, take that out. And the uh, mic stand, and it has a little toggle switch there on off for the speaker and a little storage area here. And I'm not sure if this is for cassettes or not. You'd think it would be, but if it was, it wasn't designed very well. You can't put a row of cassettes in like that because they, this little area is not deep enough. And uh, you can't even put them in like this because that doesn't close right. So really, in the end, for this big area here, you can only get three cassettes. That's all that fits. Um, got a little hanging thing there. And uh, it's actually just painted black. It's not felt like the bottom of the other case is. I'm not sure if that's just plywood or what kind of wood that is. Bell and Hal. There's no other markings on this anywhere, not on the bottom or anything. Let's uh, let me put the camera down here for a minute, and we'll open up that back part. All right, the back kind of opens up awkwardly. Inside you have a three-inch by five-inch speaker, which is bigger than the three-inch circular speaker in the cassette recorder itself. Got some numbers there, I don't know what they mean. Don't know if there's a date code anywhere in there. The wire runs down through that channel there and plugs back into the front of the cassette recorder for your audio. The power brick has an awkwardly placed, very stressed power jack going into the uh, port of the cassette recorder, plus there's a part that goes out to the AC mains. We've got some notations there on the terminal. 1 amp 125 volt DC, 4 amp 125 volt AC, 1 amp 250 volt AC. And that little thing we're jigger there kind of presses down on the power adapter when it's closed for tension I guess. This thing has every indication of being handmade, uh, including some of the bad parts where it doesn't always fit too well. 
But anyway, let's tighten it back up and test the performance of the unit. All right, let's put in our little fitness walkers tape. Pretend pre-recorded tape music here. To me it sounds best right about there, slightly flattened. This might run too fast or it just might be the way my ears are. Over two thirds of a mile. Keep it up. Okay, so that's what a pre recorded tape sounds like. Why don't we try a microphone recording? We have the microphone plugged into the mic in the remote spots and we'll try a little voice recording. I'm about 12 inches away from the mic and the pitch control or the volume control doesn't have anything to do with recording. This is automatic level control. That's These two controls here are only useful on playback and so, since this machine does seem to run fast that pitch control comes in handy. Now let's see what this sounded like. I'm plugged into the mic, the remote spots, and we'll try a little voice recording. I'm about 12 inches away from the mic, and the pitch control or the volume control doesn't have anything to do with recording. This is automatic level control. That's these two controls here are only useful on playback. And since since this machine does seem to run fast, that pitch control comes in handy. Now let's see what this sounded like. Okay, well it didn't sound too bad. Let's try uh, recording something off the radio. All right, for this test we're gonna. Enlist the aid of the Panasonic Boombox's line out properties, and we'll see what we can get plugged into the aux input here. And not sure what this is going to sound like. Uh, like I said on the microphone, these two are only good for playback, not while recording. I don't know what we're listening to here on the radio. Okay, so it should be that on playback.
Okay. That didn't sound too bad. Well, that's the Bell & Howe 294 MC cassette recorder and the executive desk tray for the Model 294s. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.